Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just um, I'm uh, happy to be here today to talk about leadership and asking for support from members from our community to uh, I guess find a way forward. I served one term, 2014 to 2017, as your chief, and really enjoyed it. And uh, I uh, had a good experience. I was I try to be fluent in our language as much as I can and look for opportunities and in particular urban skin as we create a better life for our, our young people. So I'm, 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 uh, I've always thought that way, I've been taught that way and, and it's critical for us to have input from our youth and, and along with our elders to kind of guide them along and making sure that when, when they have a concern that they are being heard and, and we're living in critical times where Time is of the essence for many people. Many of our elders want to say something, they want to speak, and then there's a lot of people that are quiet and we need to engage them. It's so important for us to plan strategically. So, a couple of ideas I want to emphasize here is that examples for strategic uh, priorities would be the cultural language to, uh, to incorporate the language and maintain a healthy connections to each other. Traditional laws and self government, you know, expand our inherent right. You know, everyone talks about protecting our, law, our trees, economic development, uh, and good governance. And I think that's the most important thing to, to involve our youth and s ensure that there's a transparent, accountable government that meets to that meets the needs of the, the growing ECN community. And continue to protect our treaty rights. I think, like, like I said, is that to set up committees that we plan together, work together. We have to look forward and think of uh, ways to prepare our education system, our, our workplace, but our, our, at the same time, our, and looking after our elders that are, especially at this time with COVID, and it's the vulnerable. And, you know, the, this COVID-19 really caught everybody by surprise, and I think we need to plan for events such as this that we are a bit more prepared to address issues, how our emergency management system is set up, but also protecting one another that, that we don't lose any more numbers. But the thing is that, you know, with this pandemic, there's going to be a few food shortage in the future, and, 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 and people have been telling me that, so when we get back into cattle and, and, uh, and, and figure out a way that we can help and, and have our members grow their own gardens and, and somehow to educate them because if, if and when something happens we are more prepared but also having a water plan we need to have a, a more uh, I guess a good water plan that we can pipe water from red rivers if it, if it if happens sometime in the future I know the talks are in place but we need to connect with the core area here is connected, but what about all the people out, out outside of the, the core area? We need to have that. My one friend, uh, my late friend, Walter Lightning, had said is that he, when he wrote his masters, he, he talked about green thought. What is that? People say that, you know, I don't think that way. I, I, you know what, I, I've learned a lot and, and I know how important it is for us to think about pre-thought and how we can manage, better manage, how we can plan for the future. But when I think about when you think about the, the definition of pre-thought, it's meticulous thinking. Like, uh, it's, uh, I believe in accountability and uh, it's for the best interest of urban school. Uh, and, uh, and we can lay the groundwork for future members and uh, future leaders. So I leave you with that. Thank you for allowing me to, to share this with you and that.